Welcome and let's talk about them carpal bones. I hope that all these cars and the noise from the rain in the background outside of my apartment don't disturb you. I actually will remove the rest of the bones so we have as less disturbance as possible. Now let's talk about them carpal bones. Well, those bones that you see here are the carpal bones. Right away, we should actually point out that these carpal bones consist of the, oops, not here, but of the proximal row and the distal row, okay? Now, the proximal row of these carpal bones is created by scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and the pisiform bone. The distal row, however, is created by the hemate, the capitate, trapezoid, and trapezium bone. The first bone that I should explain is the scaphoid bone over here. The scaphoid bone articulates, as you can see, with the radius of the forearm. This here articular surface is for the radius. Now, the scaphoid bone articulates also with many other bones, such as the lunate bone, and you can see that clearly on this surface here. This concave surface is made for the capitate bone. The capitate bone articulates here. And of course, on the front, if we pay attention, we can see that the scaphoid bone articulates with the trapezium over here, and then separated by this ridge over here is the surface for the trapezoid bone. We are done with explaining the scaphoid bone. It's often said that the scaphoid looks like a boat, but to me it doesn't look much like a boat. However, here we have the bone called lunate. I will explain why it's called lunate in a minute. But first, let's say that it articulates here with the triquetrum. Here it articulates with the hamate. Over here with the capitate. And it also has the articular surface for the scaphoid bone. All right. Then it also articulates with the radius. And normally there is a disc, an articular disc over here, which helps it articulate with the head of the ulna. Now, why is this bone called lunate? Well, if you actually look at this bone from this perspective, you will notice that it resembles a moon, a sickle moon. And actually, this bone is called lunate because luna in Latin means the moon or the sickle moon. The next bone that we will talk about is the triquetrum. The triquetrum bone can be seen right here. It articulates with the lunate bone that we just explained, and it also has this articular surface for the articulation with the articular disc that articulates with the head of the ulna. Now you can see this flat articular surface here that articulates with the small pisiform bone. Beautiful flat surface. And then, of course, you can see this large articular surface for the articulation with the hemate bone. Here is that articular surface. This way we have explained the triquetrum as well. The last bone in the proximal row is the pisiform bone. The pisiform bone can be seen here. It articulates only with the triquetrum. Now let us explain the distal row of these bones. We have so far explained the proximal row. And the proximal row creates this concavity for the articulation of these distal bones. It also articulates with the ulna and the radius. The distal row, however, articulates with the metacarpal bones and also as I just said, with the proximal row of the carpus. 
The first bone that I should explain from the distal row is actually the trapezium bone. The trapezium bone articulates here with the scaphoid, here with the trapezoid, with the second metacarpal bone, and the first metacarpal bone. The smaller bone over here is actually the trapezoid bone, articulating with the scaphoid as well, trapezium, the second metacarpal bone, and our next bone, the capitate. The capitate is large. It articulates with tra trapezoid as already explained, scaphoid as already explained, lunate, hamate, and then it articulates for sure and all the time with the third metacarpal bone, with the second metacarpal bone, and sometimes if you pay attention it can articulate here also with the fourth metacarpal bone. So we come now to this bone over here and that is the hamate bone. The hamate bone has this hook and we will talk about some details on the carpus later after we explain the articulations. The hamate bone articulates with the lunate, capitate, fourth metacarpal bone, fifth metacarpal bone, and the triquetrum. And that is the last bone that we will explain from the distal row. Probably notice that there are some prominences and tubercles on these bones. So here we have the tubercle of the scaphoid, and here is the tubercle of the trapezium bone. And here we have the hook of the hamate bone, the so-called hamulus. These have their functions, and we will explain it in a minute. To subscribe to our channel, click here. To purchase Animated Anatomy, click here. Or you can go to animatedanatomy.com and purchase it.